Hey guys, welcome back. Um, found some more time to do some more work on the little, the little DC generator. Um, today we're going to be tackling the cooling system. Well, like the raw water. What will be the raw water? Um, we're going to cool it with a separate cooling system for now until we actually get properly in the water when we move. Because obviously, sort of the water fluctuates, doesn't it? We're not always on a high water, so we're going to be using. A, a raw water pump. Um, I was initially going to go for an electric pump, but then Gemma said, like, electrics fail. So if the engine's turning, then the pump's turning, isn't it? So then that's going to be pumping water through our heat exchanger, which we've not made yet, but then through something I'm familiar with a motorcycle radiator. So I like these radiators because you can fill from them. We've got a fan switch and I've actually got a few fans for this particular radiator because we used to take them off the race bikes. So that's the plan. So the first thing we've got to do is try and mount up this raw water pump. So I bought the raw water pump second hand. So I got it like what half price. They're quite a lot of money in use. Doesn't fit. It was sold for this engine. So, so there's like a little drive in there, which corresponds with that drive. And then that's as far as we get. So we've got a big, a big gaping hole. So I'm gonna have to try and figure out what to do. We could have to make an adapter plate to go in between. Big job, don't really wanna do it, but if we have to. So I'm gonna set the pump apart, just in case we can move the shaft or anything daft like that. So we're gonna strip the pump and then we're gonna have a look and reassess. So the actual impeller is very, very poorly. It's obviously been sat for a very long time. So obviously we'll need a new one of those, won't we? Okay, so finding so far, shaft's fine. Pump's really, really good to be honest here, apart from the impeller. So I bought a reasonable pump. Obviously there's not much to go wrong with them. A couple of seals and bearings, but. Um, so, it is designed for one of these engines, but maybe it was like a variation in engines or something like that. So it fits in, it'll drive, um, it just won't mount up. So we now need to make, we decided to make a spacer plate. Because even without the shaft, we tried to pull it on, it'll go in, but the bolt holes don't line up to these, to the, the PCD of these, um, this pattern. So, unfortunately, we've got to make a spacer plate. So. How do we go about doing that? So first we'll figure out the thickness. We can do some copying of the gasket and then we can copy this. But as long as we, we machine the tolerance between there nice and the engine nice, then the shaft will perfectly line up and then we can figure out our stud pattern later then, can't we? So I have to use like Allen bolts to mount the plate to this and then some little nuts and studs coming out of the plates so there we go then so we'll do some measuring up might take a while so in my little pile of hoarding i found myself a nice sort of billet of alloys okay so we're mounted up in the pillar drill um pretty centered um it takes quite a while to drill through a big chunk of alley like this, so I've actually offset it ever so slightly, so I'm hoping this does a bit of an off cut off the side, because that helps get rid of the swarf, because we're going to be machining it back anyway, so um, let's give it a go. So we've now got our round, very warm piece of billet. Yay. So now we need to clamp this up in the lathe, trim her up, and then start start machining the thickness and machining our little our little 
flange collar thing here. So now I'm going to be machining the face to keep 34.3 millimeters. So I think it's going to be about 34 at the end. So we're going to machine down here now to get this flange here. And we need a maximum of five millimeters from there to there. Okay, so it's been a few days. Um, I had to put, put this job down, but in the meantime, I've been like just doing a few little jobs here and there on it. So it's now all machined. i um, got to put some studs in it. Um, the locating holes to go into the block. These these are the pins here which um, correspond to the pump. We need to make some gaskets now and um, get them mounted up. So we may as well clean the pump up before it gets fitted because I think it's going to fit it once. So we'll clean it and give it a quick paint. So we'll give it a quick rattle cam block. Okay, so we're all ready to be um, installed. It's all prepped, clean, brake cleaned. Um, stick some glue on it, stick it on, shall we? So she's all mounted up quite nice now. Plenty of belt clearance. This part, this is just a fuel pipe here, temporary. Um, turns, turns brilliantly. Right, so we now need to start connecting the pump now to the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is going to be mounted along here in the case. So we've got everything laid out now here. And this, this is going to be, I've been trying to sort of illustrate it. I don't know if that's the word, anyway. So this is 28 millimeter pipe. <coughs> It's going to be having 22 millimeter pipe going through it. So here's a quick. So it's going to have a gap between it. So the two different fluids are going to be in close proximity. So then they'll equalise temperature. Oh, they'll have a warm one up or cool the one down. So we want to cool the engine core down with raw seawater. So the raw the raw water is going to be going through the centre pipe, which is the larger pipe. So the hardest pipe to clog up. And then the engine coolant is going to be going, could be basically wrapped around this, this copper pipe, isn't it? So um, here's, our, here's our loop at the moment. So our engine coolant is going to be coming down, so it's going to be on the outside, on the outside of the raw water. It's going to be coming down inside the 28mm pipe, and it's going to be coming through this link here. It's going to be coming back, and then it's going to be coming out of this one, back into the circuit, hopefully a lot cooler. Whereas our raw water is going to be coming in one of these ends here. So we're coming down looping, it's going to be coming out of this circuit. So we're coming through this 22 millimeter pipe, through this pipe, down this pipe, all the way back, out of this one. And then it will be going into a radiator, but then eventually it will be going then into the exhaust, not the exhaust manifold, but it's going to be going into the exhaust stream and then exiting the boat that way. But as we know at the moment, we're just going to be circulating through our motorcycle radiator. So I personally have done very, very, very limited soldering. Um, I think I fitted a radiator in our house once. Um, amazingly it didn't leak, so, but I have watched a couple of YouTube videos, been quite informative on how to get a good solder joint. So I'm not going for pretty, I'm going for basically stop it leaking. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go.
So I'm definitely not the best at soldering, but I can pretty much say it's sealed. I'll try and get rid of all these little snags off later and stuff, but it doesn't really matter, does it? So for me, first attempt in a good few years, and um, didn't really know what I was doing in the first place, so... So we've got these... Ow! Still hot. So we've got them two bits in place still. Now, I need to... Loosely fit this end now, I think. Okay, so we're now soldered, well I'm going to call it solvent, but definitely stuck together anyway. Um, the two outer sections, so that's where the, the antifreeze is going to be running. So now we need to insert the, the tubes for the raw water now, so they need to go all the way through. Hopefully we can get them all the way through. Um, I've put like a slight, a slight lead on this end, so that's going to be cut off later. So. Hmm, that was easy, wasn't it? Okay, so flux are up. So now within the frame, this is going to be mounted around here. So we're going to be having some 90s on the end. So, oopsie. So basically we want that to be like that. What do you think? Okay, so this is, this is where we're up to now. I know it looks like a bit of a musical instrument, like, but um, yeah, so. I've done a quick drawing of it, just in case you don't understand my my thinking, because it's quite. This has all been in my head, um, so I just want to quickly draw it now. So, so the engine coolant is pictured in the red, so that's basically wrapping around, wrapping around this pipe here. So the engine coolant comes all the way down here and then goes back to the water pump, so it returns to the engine, and then the the raw water or the water that's going to be going through our radiator at the moment but when we are properly in the water and uh, the raw water is going to be passing through coming out the end which is this end here and then coming along here so then it makes the two the two dif different temperatures meet each other around these areas here so just want to clear that up um, Simon you need to stop lifting engines up Okay. Because you're gonna hurt your back, and what happens if you end up in an ambulance? I'm thinking mouth to mouth. I'm gonna weld them onto here. So she now sits on the little cradles, you can see there, so we will be putting like a liner in those but we're probably going to paint the whole frame first before we actually glue some in but then we can put like a hose clip around it, I don't want to touch it because it's hot. Um, so yeah, so now we need to work out the plumbing for the rest now, so I've kind of done a bit of, a bit of plumbing already. So I've now decided to mount the coolant reservoir here, so because keeps it above the thermostat line, so it's the highest point in the system, so any air will get bled off up to this reservoir. So um, I made a little bracket, it's a piece of scrap head lying around, a bit of angle, so I put some some rubber mounts between it, just just to try and take take the um, the vibration out. So it's now going to be mounted to our 
alternator bracket. So I'm just gonna put a few welds on this now. Boing, boing, boing. So we'll now secure the pipe to stop the, the big flex coming on. Because got to bear in mind it's probably got like two kilos of um, coolant in there, isn't it? So. so from the coolant reservoir now, the hose comes all the way down and it will go into the back of this one here. From the exhaust manifold, comes down and it will go into the back of here. And then back to the water pump, it will come back up from here. So we need to solder all this together. Oh yeah, and I put um, a drain in the system as well, so at the lowest point, it's a nice drain. So just need to solder all this up now, um, and then we'll start looking at the um, the the thermostat side of things. Go you know, down to this one here. So we've got all of our manifold at the bottom together now. So now we need to link the top hose, which is after the thermostat, so that now needs to come round here and down to here. So I'm now going to make a little a little joining piece here, but it's also going to have an air bleed on it. So any air that's at the top of the system will then go to the reservoir. Cool, so she's all plumbed up. Um, there's been some sort of bodgery plumbing going on because um, I haven't got enough hose clips and all these 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 bleed offs at the top. So we've got the bleed off, which is just before the exhaust. That goes back to the top of the expansion tank. We've got the bleed off at the top here. Uh, I've got no hose clips for these, but I've prioritised on hose clips at the bottom. So. I think now we'll put some water in it and test the 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 antifreeze circuit um, and then we can then proceed to do the rest so um, yeah let's put some water in it take her outside hopefully run her up um, and get her up to temperature yeah we're only putting clean water in at the moment just in case we get any leaks It'd be easy to deal with I think Four litres. Okay, we're outside now. Um, so we put some water in it. Nothing's gushed out. So that's good. So technically now we've got water all the way through these, through the outer tubes of this now. And then it's all round. Um, we're looking quite good. Gonna gonna give it a crank. Um, it hasn't run for a very very long time. So I'm gonna do it genuine. A quick prime, some heat. Hopefully I can show you this working as well. As well, you can see, obviously I've got no impeller, but the pump's turning quite nice. So we left the impeller out. Because obviously, we're not we're not pumping the um, the raw water side just yet. We're just testing the um, just testing the anti circuit. So um, yeah, looking good. A lot of brown staining in here, which must have been in the block. So before we take it inside, we'll drain it. You know, we'll flush. Because I've never actually had anti freeze in it. Sixty degrees. 
You know what? I think it's a success. Absolute success. No leaks anywhere. Cool. So, do you like the um, the control unit now? I don't know if you noticed earlier the actuator uh, operating itself and maintaining an RPM. Um, which is really really cool because obviously if I go to if I go to start now. constant rev so even if there's a load on it it'll still pick pick up the throttle but maintain that RPM. I apologize about the lighting but the sun's going down. We'll take it back inside now and go and assess what's next. So that, that was quite a successful test. Um, no leaks or anything despite all my dodgy solder joints. Um, so yeah there's a few little areas here and there which need sorting out. Obviously, need some hose clips. Um, need some better, better, better pipes in places. Um, the only tidying up, but that that'll be our finishing jobs. That so there is there is a lot to still sort of figure out locations for. We've still got to figure out a location for the airbox. Um, don't know if you noticed when it was running how much quieter it went with the airbox on. So, um, but yeah, all good. So. Hopefully next time we'll get the get the radiator on. That'll be our raw water circuit. So, um, and then yeah, there is there is loads loads more to do. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, see you next time.